Conan Doyle would have said amen to that, and sat down eager to understand how today's filmmakers at the BBC practice their craft. The scene we've just been filming involves um, Matthew and Elaine, who play Agnes and Edward, getting trapped in a pit with an allosaur that then collapses on top of some stakes and dies, thereby they can get away. If you can separate making a film into layers, and we have Matthew and Elaine, who are the actors, and we have the pit, which is the set, but we have one crucial element missing, which is a dinosaur. So we have to imagine what the dinosaur looks like, for the most part. We do have bits of the dinosaur, but we never have the whole dinosaur. So we have to essentially work out which bits of the dinosaur are where. There's different ways you can shoot things. You can use animatronic or computer graphics. So it's sort of working out what's the best way uh, to combine all the different elements. An animatronic is a mechanical puppet. And basically, on a production like The Lost World, we use animatronics for the close-up sections of the creatures. We have a head, a small front arm, and we have a bottom section of a leg and a tail of the allosaur. We have a rig, which I wear uh, on my back, which supports the dinosaur's head weight. And I can then obviously operate things like the jaws myself via a lever. So it becomes a huge hand puppet. The trouble is that animatronic isn't as free to move as the computer graphic is, because the thing is 11 meters long. And you've seen the head. The head is what? Four feet long, maybe. For him to actually move that head, so that it's moving with the right amount of momentum is very difficult. So we're really only working on big shots, you know, the head in the foreground or the foot in the foreground. It doesn't seem to work when you get any wider shot. Well, we work very closely with uh, Framestore, who are creating the computer-generated dinosaurs. They start with the sculpture of the actual dinosaur, and we base our animatronic full-size parts on the same sculpture. Between the two of us, we can marry together the virtual dinosaurs and the mechanical dinosaurs. And by clever intercutting of the shots, often you can't tell which are which. Um, we also have to be quite uh, concerned about the interactions between the dinosaurs and the surrounding environment. So, for example, we're often tying little bits of fishing wire to uh, ferns and things so that we sort of, you know, visualise where the dinosaur is going to walk and you think, right, as it walks down there or chases someone, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit that fern so that then when we put the dinosaur in, it looks like it brushes past. Similarly with uh, footsteps, scuffing up leaves and twigs and that sort of thing. So you're constantly trying to imagine if the dinosaur was there, what it had not, what it had touched. I try and move really fast there. Seven, three, six, take two. What's it like for the real flesh and blood actors who are trying to give a performance and cope with the very precise requirements of the special effects? So far as acting goes, you're basically reacting to something that isn't there at all. It's basically left up to your imagination that you, you try and you try and picture something that might frighten you or you just try and think of something that does frighten you. They are having to sort of imagine what it would be like when this thrashing beast was here, uh, how he was going to get round the creature and pull her out in time, uh, or in fact the creature dies and so he manages to get her out. But um, their physical reaction has to be to, to nothing. Um, and he, he, I think particularly his movements around work very yeah, well. Yeah, I think, I think he does do it very well and it, it is definitely a difficult thing to do and to get right and it makes, it makes our job much easier. When people don't look scared enough and they, they don't leap out of the way enough and it makes the creature look unbelievable however well you blend it in and make the ferns move and all that sort of thing. If they don't look scared, you know, you don't believe the creature's really there. Uh, so it's, it's very important uh, for us that they they, they do that well, and I think Matthew did do it very well. So, dinosaur creation has always stood at the cutting edge of animation. By writing dinosaurs into the story,